Hello, hello, hello everyone. Come on in. Tonight is the night. We're going to get started here in a few minutes. I am so excited to bring this information to you to help you raise your vibration tonight because that is what tonight is going to be about. It is going to be about oh, feeling into that high vibration. So first of all, welcome you guys. I just want to thank this community. We have the most amazing women in here who are so supportive to me for everything that I do. And this morning I got a message right away that the guidebook link didn't work in my email. So learning curve for me, learning, um, <laughs> I had never sent a guidebook, hey Teresa, hi Joanna, um, through my MailChimp before. I'd only ever sent it out to my groups in my in my courses. And so I just email from my Jay Gallant Art email when you're in my group. And so if you don't know this yet, it's very difficult to add in a guidebook. I'm sure there's probably a way, but I couldn't figure it out. So we got around it. I hope that you were able to print out your guidebook. I have mine here and it's quite long, right? But it's got spaces in here for you to use tonight to write in to, and to follow along. Hey, Sammy. Hi, Josie. So glad you guys are here. So, yes. So first of all, make sure you have your guidebook. Make sure you have a pen and a paper, right? Um, so I want to take a minute as people are coming in and I just, first of all, say thank, welcome. So glad you're here. Oh, thanks, Sammy. <laughs> um, and introduce myself. So I am Janice. I am an artist. I am a teacher. I teach middle school part time and I do my business, online business here part time, my art business and my coaching business. So I am um, a spiritual mindset coach or a creativity coach, creatively fit coach. There's so many, so many different terms to it. I don't know what to tell people anymore. But what that means is I use, hey, Jamie, I hope you're feeling good tonight. Um, I use creativity to help you remember the power and the wisdom that you hold within you and to connect to that higher power wisdom that we all have. Hi, Patty. Um, so those of you that know me, um, you know this stuff because you've been taking some courses with me. We've been creating together. And there are so many powerful, amazing stories from the ladies that I have worked with and had the honor to share space with, um, especially, you know, doing the creative flow um, exercises and activities that we do. And then all of a sudden getting, receiving messages and getting the epiphanies and the awarenesses that maybe wouldn't have come through if we weren't sitting down and doing that creative activity. So I'm, I just, I love doing that. And so I incorporate all that mindset, um, growth and awareness uh, with creative activities, right? Um, I have been keenly aware and working on manifesting and how the heck does manifesting work for uh, about 25 years? You're like, I don't even know. Way back in 1995 was when I really got serious about it. What That's when I started to really say and commit to, I am going to figure this out. Because I know we're manifesting all the time, which we are. But I want to figure out exactly how this works. And, you know, very shortly after I was in my search, you know, The Secret came out and it, it was a great book for building awareness. But I knew that there was more to it than that. And so I started my own kind of practice and research around it. I would pay really close attention to when things worked out 
in my life when something great happened, when something manifested in my life that I was trying to bring in, I would pay attention to what was I thinking? Where was my energy at, you know, prior to this manifesting in my life? And when things went really sideways or not so good, I did the same thing. I paid really close attention to it. I also worked really hard on connecting to those cosmic powers that are out there to help us. So I just want to let you know that I have been doing this for a very, very long time. And I have a lot to share with you tonight. So one thing, uh, tonight is part one of three nights of this inspiration and to help you feel your calling within you and help you um, move forward in your manifesting in your life and creating, consciously creating your life. You are the artist of your life. And instead of sitting on the sidelines and allowing life to kind of just um, move you along, you get to get into the driver's seat and start to begin to create the life that you want, become the artist at the canvas for your life. So I'm going to um, take you through these three nights. Um, I want you to leave each night. My intention is that you leave each night with specific steps that you can take to start to become even more, uh, more of a conscious creator in your life. And um, those of you that know me, you know that I do these these launch kickoff parties, uh, information training nights, uh, several times when I'm about to launch one of my courses. So I will tell you about Dream and Journey as we move along. But I really, whatever you decide to do after this three nights, I want you to leave with specific content that you can, that you can use in your life to have a better, better life. Um, hey, Dal. Hi, Kimber. Yeah, good to see you guys here. Um, so just so you know, we have a little game we're going to play for a prize at the end here. Um, I have uh, affirmation I'm going to give you, but I'm only going to give you one word at a time throughout the night. So you have to write the words down and keep track. And then to get your name in the draw, you have to actually write the full affirmation out and put it in the comments. And I will be uh, doing a draw from the names of the people that get it right. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so tonight's topic is recognizing that you have a soul contract with the universe, right? And that is that you are supposed to create the dreams in your heart. You are supposed to tap into your heart and become the creator of those dreams. You will find that each topic that we talk about tonight, tomorrow and Thursday night, they build on each other and they also weave into each other. But what I'm gonna give you are the three, well, four most important steps to being a master manifester in your life to really take your ma manifesting up to the next level, okay? All right, so um, if, if you are watching this replay, um, awesome. It will be in here for a little while, but if you really want to, to keep it, then you need to be on my email list because I'll be mailing you out the re recording, right? So one of the most important steps to becoming the artist of your life, actually, this might be the most important step, because if we're not being truthful to what is in our heart, if we aren't really connecting to our heart, and that can be a challenge for some people in and of itself, but if we're not being honest and truthful, our manifesting is going to get tripped up over and over again on our journey. Um, there's two key points here I'm going to talk about tonight. And there's so much to say about these that I'm narrowing it down uh, to these two key points. Um, just know that there is a lot more to learn around them. But the first one is your worthiness, your sense of worthiness, 
And the second one is your belief in your ability to create what it is to create what is in your heart, right? So let's talk about worthiness first. This one comes up over and over and over with my coaching clients and in my groups. Um, it always keeps coming back to, uh, that's that worthiness again. Yep, it is. Um, and they always ask me, well, how? How do I increase my sense of worthiness? How do I do this? What do I have to do to increase my sense of worthiness? And here's the thing. You don't do anything, right? It's all about being, being. <laughs> you don't have to do anything more to be more worthy of your heart's desires. You are worthy, period, okay? Um, bef before I go too far, I have to give you your first word to the affirmation because I'll keep forgetting. Okay, so the first word for the draw is, I hope that's not backwards, my. Okay, so write that down. My. <laughs> okay, um, to get in the draw, you got to get the full sentence. So, so the trick is that you don't have to do anything. You, It's just about being, right? You don't have to do anything to be more worthy. You're absolutely worthy of everything that you have, every desire that you have in your heart. You are worthy of having more fun in your life. You are worthy of having better health in your life. You are worthy of more abundance, of a better career, one that you get excited to get up and go to work every morning. You are worthy of love and healthy relationships. That is so important, right? These are the things that our heart is crying out for more of. Yeah. Think of it this way. When, when a baby is born, when we get these sweet little babies born, they are so worthy. There is like there isn't anyone that would look at a baby and go, oh, well, that was not worthy enough, right? We have all of our love, you know, poured into these children and with all this hope for their future. And when they're born, there isn't anyone, there isn't a God or anyone saying, okay, well, pass this one through. This one gets to be worthy, not that one. That one's not worthy, right? Like we, they come into this world worthy, right? And you are worthy because you were born, period, right? Did you know that statistics show, hi, Larissa, um, statistics show now, there's a mathematical statistic that says that the chances of you being born is one in 400 trillion right? One in 400 trillion. That's a chance of you being born here. So, oh my gosh, doesn't that just make you think, wow, maybe I am here for a reason. Maybe I do have a purpose here, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, you do. You bring a light to this world and everybody does. And it wouldn't be the same without your light. So the babies come in worthy. We came in worthy. At, at When we were a baby, we came in worthy. Now, it's ourselves, it's our own selves that create a sense of not being worthy enough, not being good enough, right? To receive in our life, to receive goodness, to be not afraid to open up to that goodness, right? It's what happens is it's the experiences and the things that happen to you between the day you were born and today. The universe, the universal powers and energies that are out there are not punishing you for anything. They are not judging you for anything. 
you, you still get as much worthiness as you did the day you were born. The universal cosmic energies that are out there for us to tap into and work with are non-judgmental, pure essence of energy. That energy is love. It is grace. It is beauty. It is kindness. It is it is expansive, right? It is abundant. It is all high vibrational energy with no judgment whatsoever. We are the ones that put the judgment on ourselves. Now, this is good because it's our mindset. Every All these events that have happened to us have impacted our mindset and the things that we believe in our life, right? Whether we're conscious of it or not, but that is what makes us feel worthy or not so worthy. Maybe worthy in some areas, not so worthy in other areas, right? This is good. This is good news because, because there is hope. We get to change our mindset. We can work on that. I had a friend who did her um, master's thesis in worthiness, women's worthiness. And did you know what she found out is that only about 20% of the women people out there will work on shifting their mindset? Only about 20%. But I believe that is changing right now. I believe that the world events have caused us to start to look deeper. But those people that aren't, they're living from their emotions. And they live from these emotions and the emotions are coming from all the events that are going on around them. And so what they're doing is they're just responding to the emotions and events in their life instead of becoming the creator of their life. So there is this shift that you can consciously make and that, that is where the power is, right? It's not that you have to do anything. It is simply, well, actually, there's the journal question. The first journal question for you is, um, hold on. What exactly, what exactly would you have to do to be more deserving of your heart's desires? And if you sit and journal that out, that can really bring up a lot of awarenesses for you of beliefs and maybe ways that you're punishing yourself. Yeah, we do it. <laughs> and holding, we hold ourselves back from receiving because of these limited beliefs that are in there, right? Yes. Reacting, not responding. Yeah, exactly. Reacting. Reacting to their emotions that are caused from the events around them, right? Anyways, so think about that. What exactly would you have to do to be more deserving of your heart's desires? So, okay. So the shift is, instead of doing, you be worthy. Just be worthy. You claim it, okay? And it's not about deserving anything. You don't have to go through any struggles. You don't have to suffer in order to be worthy. That's something that our society really, you know, we thrive on and want good people, good things to happen to good people. So, you know, somebody wins a lottery and we think, oh man, they deserve that. They've been through so much. And it kind of causes some funkiness within our minds of whether or not we're worthy for great things, right? So the shift or <clears throat> yeah, the shift comes in your energy and that, or the shift is in your energy that comes from your mindset. So when you consciously start to change the story, tell a new story, dig into where the, that old thought form came from, that's part of the work. And that's what helps clean out these old, these old um, limiting beliefs that keep us from feeling our worthiness, right? So you stop searching for approval or permission who who's going to give you permission to have your heart's desires the only one that can do that is you 
stop searching for approval and permission and you step into claiming your worthiness. You claim it. You decide. It's about deciding that this is your life, right? And claiming the power that's already within you. It's a state of being. It's an energy that you hold. Now, most women struggle with this because we're so used to putting other people ahead of ourselves. We're nurturing, we're caring, we're the mothers, right? You put your kids ahead of yourself. Everyone else comes first, except you. And I get that, that you don't want to rock the boat. You don't want other people to be uncomfortable or unhappy. You're, you like to fix things, right? Fix the family, keep the family um, all happy and getting along. And I I get it. I, I am absolutely guilty of trying to control the dynamics in my family, right? Um, but we need to... St- we need to start to learn that we don't have to be that way, that that it's okay, right? We need to start to create a practice of healthy boundaries and and putting ourselves up there, ahead, right? That this is your life. You know, people that have had, you know, to deal with like cancer, that they've had to look at death in the face they get this they really get this because they they know that when they have had to have that deep conversation with themselves about have they lived their life in the fullest way possible have they left a legacy of love and of you know making this world a better place right and so if that's something that I, I, I haven't ever had to deal with cancer, and I know that my my own experiences pale in comparison, but I have often in my life looked at, well, really dug into if I only had a year to live, if I only had a month to live. And I often go back to that, and I know it sounds morbid, but it keeps me real. It keeps me digging into okay, what what kind of life do I want to walk down this path with? Okay, so pausing right there before I get too far ahead because I need to give you the next word, okay, for the country. The next word is desires. Desires. Okay, moving on. Hope you're in the game. <laughs> So creating healthy boundaries is absolutely a much bigger topic than we have here tonight, but that is definitely something that we all need to work on. And it's a big step in the process of claiming your worthiness, right? And everybody's situation is completely individual and unique. Um, So I have some thoughts for you. Can you, um, can you believe that every person on our planet is worthy of food and shelter and clean drinking water. I think we probably can, right? Can you believe that every person on our planet is innately worthy of love? Yeah, I think so. Everybody, everybody's worthy of being loved. There's no shortage of love right? And I know you can because you're a loving and nurturing woman. And these are things that like I see the women around me getting up to fight for, you know, that's what gets them riled up. Hey, you can't treat somebody that way. Or this, this area needs more help. Let's do something to help them, right? And that's why there's so many women that are that are creating heart-centered businesses right now, there's a rise in that feminine energy. And we need you. The world needs more feminine right now. We need all of us, right? But if you can believe that all 
people are innately worthy of love and of shelter and of clean drinking water and of, you know, um, food, then, then you can also believe that you're worthy of all of this too. You're worthy of all of this and more. And you can absolutely get to the place where you believe that you are worthy of more that each of us are worthy of more. We all are. We all can tap into this access of this, this wisdom, this power, this grace that there is a flow to. And through your practice, you can get to be feeling so powerful that in six months from now, you won't even recognize yourself. So because um, you know that you can't make a difference in this world. You can't step up and rise up to help clear our world of all of the issues that are going on. We need each and every woman to be able to have a part, shine their light brighter, right? Create the businesses, create the movements. But you can't do that if you're struggling to survive, if you're you know, in a job that you hate, right? If you're worried about bills, there's no room for you to be of bigger service. So don't you think the universe wants you to have more? The universe wants you to be able to create in a bigger way, because that's what's going to bring more light to this world and keep us moving forward. That is so important. The universe wants you to have abundance so that you can get out there and make a difference, right? Um, I have another dot here for another word. Okay, next word for you is R. A-R-E. R. Are these backwards for you guys? <laughs> Sorry about that if they are. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, okay, so. The journal questions that are in there for you to help you get here. Yeah. Who would you be if you didn't have to worry about money, your job, or having enough time in your life? Who do you think you would be? Hmm. What kind of person would you be? Right? Yeah. And... Who would you be if you didn't have to worry about survival? I asked that question once. My whole world shifted after that. I just went, universe, I really want to know who I would be if I didn't have to worry about survival from week to week. And everything changed since then, right? It's asking the right questions, right? What could you create if you have the time, space, and resources to do it? Hmm. Makes you think about life in a whole different way, right? So here's something for you. And when I shifted um, my mindset to this, everything changed for me. Um, and when when you do work with me and when you work in my when you come into my courses, this is what I teach you um, how to do, okay? But your worthiness comes from a bigger energy flowing through you. You shift from creating from your personality, your ego, to allowing the creative forces of the universe to flood through you. And when you do that, like, then you're able to step out of the way. You're, you're, you're able to say, okay, this is not about me. This isn't about me. It's about something much, much bigger. And I know this because I had a really beautiful experience once about 14 years ago when I was painting. I all of a sudden, I was painting a, paint, a picture and all of a sudden I put a brush stroke down and it was like the perfect stroke. And I just felt this energy flood through me that was much, much bigger than me. 
And I remember thinking, this must, this must be what it feels like when, when people, musicians are jamming together and all of a sudden everything comes into sync with them. And it's just like they are creating music from their soul. And it was the same thing when I paint. It's the same feeling of, oh, this is not me. This is coming through me, and it is a powerful and beautiful experience, right? Oh, yes. I love it. I feel, Carrie, I feel I would be more soulful without restrictions of worldly worry. Yes, you would be more soulful because abundance enhances the beauty within you. When you get more abundance, and we can talk about this in the form of money, too. When you get more money into your life that eases up the survival and all those restrictions, then it enhances who you are, right? The money allows you to, to shine your light even brighter, right? So I used to feel, you know, unworthy of being paid for my work as an artist. I used to really struggle with people paying me. And I used to struggle with being paid as a coach because for me, it comes so easy and I love doing it. But now I know it's, it's an exchange of energy. I cannot keep creating in my life. I cannot keep helping other women, you know, rise up into their power if I am not supported. Right. If I am if I'm worrying about buying supplies for my paints or I'm worried about, oh, no, I'm going to have to go um, back full time into the classroom because I, I just can't afford to keep giving this this time out for people. Right. That's no good. Then I'm not serving and my heart and my passion is absolutely in what I'm doing. I love teaching my students too, but I really want to move into this full time, right? This is where I'm expanding to. This is where I can most serve, right? So our ego um, keeps us feeling unworthy, right? Our ego blocks the flow of abundance and makes us feel like we are unworthy of our time, our knowledge of receiving gifts right? You have to get out of the way of that. You have to, you have to allow that creative, that, that higher power to move through you and stop letting your ego make you feel like you're not worthy of it. Because the universal powers can't work beauty in our world without us, right? They need us in order to physically do things in the world. And we have to follow that. There was a time when I learned to really step out of the way. And it was uh, a time when um, my husband had gone into business for himself and he was doing very well. And we were, we were definitely sending in our income tax payments every fourth month or whatever the requirement was. And, but at the end of the year, we still owed $10,000, but there wasn't anywhere for that to come from nowhere, no one to lean on, no credit available. It just was like, oh my gosh, how did this happen? And I was stressing and stressing and stressing about it. I was in my small minded self and how are we going to do this? How is this going to happen? And the one weekend I decided that I would get out of the way and I said, universe, I am like handing this over to you because I have no idea how we're going to deal with this. this huge bill. It just made me feel like I wanted to throw up every time I thought about it. So that weekend, um, my husband had gone away and I had the weekend alone here and I decided that I was going to let go of it, get out of the way and let the universe work its magic. And I kept thinking, okay, it's okay. The universe has it. It's, it's all going to be okay. And I just, every time it came up, I would just feel like I was handing it over and allowing the universe to just work its magic, get out of the way, get out of my ego. 
trying to control it all, right? And then um, Monday came and I was kind of back to worrying about it, but I had been in that vibration long enough. And we happened to get a letter in the mail about, um, it was less than two weeks later, we got a letter in the mail that told us that we had actually $11,000 sitting in a insurance savings policy that we neither one of us realized we had and it just kind of and we hadn't gotten letters before about this policy and then all of a sudden this letter came in and that we had access to it it was like oh this stuff works <laughs> i just manifested ten thousand dollars for us and so it was me getting out of the way of trying to control it. And every single time in my life, we even manifested this house. I manifested this house. I had put it on my dream mandala, what I wanted. The dream mandala, 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 I always say it wrong, is something we create in dream and journey. And there is some right behind me here on the wall powerful tool that helps you put your desires into a sacred symbol that holds a resonance on its own and yeah this house came because I got out of the way and I let the universe do its work right so that is huge that is huge now I'm going to keep going because I I'm getting off on too many stories here um, and we only have like we can't go over a full hour because Facebook doesn't like when you do lives. And I like, I like 40 minute calls, but I can't believe we're already at 40 minutes almost. Okay. So um, you have to let the power flow in. Think of it this way. Who are you to stop that flow of the universe? Right? Who are you to stop the power of that that energy that creates universes like little old you no get out of the way let that energy flow through you right all right so it's all about mindset you guys it's all about mindset and changing shifting how you're seeing things you have to get up every single morning and do the work to clear away the clutter and the ego voice so that you allow your creative flow to speak louder. You just, you, you learn how to step out of the way and let that power flow through you. So what is in your heart, right? What is in your heart that you really want to create? And it may be just whispering right now. Maybe some of you know exactly what you want, right? Really sinking into your heart and listening to your heart is really hard. I know my sister, she's like, you know, she won't even go there with me. She will not even go there because she feels like there's no, there's no use in that. It's not going to happen. So there's no use in even looking at that. And I'm like, no, it can happen. You can create this. You are the artist. Uh, but here's what I think really helps us. Okay. Because you may still find that you're feeling selfish, right? A lot of us do. We feel selfish if we, if we sink into what it is our heart wants to create. So here's the way around it, all right? You're going to find your two whys. You know, they always say in business, what's your big why? Because it's going to get hard to keep going and you got to have a bigger why, which I agree. Um, as I'm building this business, I know, um, but I actually feel like, there's a force bigger than me that keeps me going every day. But first of all, what, what are your selfish whys? So sit down and really get honest with yourself. What do you want more of? Like you want, and a lot of us go, well, I don't need to be rich, but I just want enough to survive. Well, hell no. Why can you not be rich? <laughs> and what is rich to you? Like as far as money how much is rich right write it down why not the universe doesn't care they don't care it doesn't care it give you five hundred dollars or five million dollars it does not matter to the universe what matters is your vibration and the difference you're making in the world okay so 
what are your selfish whys? What do you want more of in your life? And yes, you might be like, oh, I want more feelings of peace. And we really go into this in Dream and Journey about how to identify what it is that your heart is yearning for. But what do you want more of? Do you want a bigger house? Do you want to travel more? Do you want more money? Um, do you want a different career? Do you want more space and time to yourself? Right? Just write it out. And then you go to your second why. Your second why is the bigger, more global why. So um, once you have, if you created all of the things that you want for yourself, once that's all in place, then what do you want to do? How do you want to contribute to the world? What could you do? You know, some of you might say, well, you know what? I'm really concerned about our environment. I want to help change our environment and become an advocate for the environment, right? Or maybe uh, I it just breaks my heart that there's kids, those little orphans that are starving, and I want to make a difference there. And maybe you just want to get an, uh, you know, sponsor a child or 10 ch children, with, whatever. Um, maybe it's the animals in the world you feel really call, called to help. Maybe it's to help women get out of abusive situations like, oh, gosh, my heart aches for women that feel like they don't have choices in their life. That's a big why for me. Maybe you want to help get drugs off the street. I don't know. You know what? Some of you have super big passions in the world, and you might go out there and create a movement, right? If you had the time, the money, the resources, what would you do? How would you make a difference? And some of you might be like, well, you know what? I just I just want to go, you know, feed kids lunch at school. Right? <laughs> like, that's awesome. We need that. Or maybe some of you are like, no, I just want an acreage where I can go and and take in orphan animals and and save these animals. Right. It's all beautiful. It's what your heart is calling you to, because these desires in your heart, this this passion that you feel in your heart was given to you the moment that you came into this world. It was implanted within you. It is part of your soul contract that you came here and you have these desires and they're different from my desires for a reason. And tapping into those and being true, listening to your heart's truth is so important. Because when you step up and you feel that worthiness, that's, you know, when you start to let the floodgates open so that you go, yeah, okay, I'm going to create a life with more ease and joy and abundance for myself. And then I am going to be able to make a difference in the world. We need women to have money and resources to make a difference. We need good women because they will do good things, right? So, where was I? When we feel that our dreams will ultimately do good in the world, we're more able to give ourselves permission to speak the truth of our own heart. Yeah, when we think we're going to make a difference, then we can step into our heart's truth, right? So, that's the next journal activity is to write down your two whys. I think I missed, I missed a spot. Here's another. Here is another word for you in the contest safe safe is the next word okay safe all right and there's one more word so we're not done yet okay so that's worthiness the second point i was going to talk about was beliefs okay so the belief in your ability to create this in your life, to create your heart's desires in your life. Belief is huge. It is huge, okay? There's three big pillars in becoming the artist of your life, in creating, co-creating in your life, consciously co-creating. And the first pillar is belief. And I'm going to tell you another one tomorrow and the third one on Thursday night. But you have to believe that you can step up, that you can show up, that you can 
take the inspired steps and actions that you can continue to believe in yourself even when it looks like it's not working and continue to believe in it this never stops it never stops you get up every day and believe right and when you're wavering when you're feeling like yeah janice is crazy this this stuff doesn't work right you use the tools to shift yourself back and when i say tools these are the things that i use okay find your mentors right surround yourself with people that are doing the same thing as you that are high vibration and are working on their vibration every day surround yourself with the books the music the podcasts hire the coaches i don't care if it's me or somebody else just hire the coach right i have a coach i will keep having a coach because my coach is there. She helps me remember what I'm creating, what I'm building. She helps me decipher the blocks that come up and clear them away. Listen, or sorry, take the courses. I have spent thousands of dollars on courses to learn and grow in this whole arena of manifesting and raising my vibration. It works. I am here to tell you it works. I wouldn't be working part time as a teacher instead of full time if it didn't work. It has grown and it's taken on a life of its own. And you know what? It was just this past year that I really started to step into believing in what I'm doing. Because I was always doing it and creating it, but not quite believing. And then all of a sudden this year, I had a huge shift of, yes, I am doing the right thing. I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? You can't let excuses get in your way. You work on the journaling, the art journaling, the taking the creative time for you. You have to give yourself the time. And the meditating and you have to put it up here way up here ahead of everything else your vibration is the most important relationship you need to have is your own vibration with you it's because you know what when you commit everything shifts when i committed to writing my book when i stood in my kitchen if you've read my book and I was like, yeah, I'd like to write a book. I've had this thought for a couple of years. I'd really like to write a book. And then, but I was like, oh, I don't know any publishers. I don't know anybody who's a writer. And I don't know. But the day that I stood at my kitchen sink and I went coaching myself. Yeah, but you know what, Janice? Like, you could do it. You could figure it out step by step, one step at a time. You could do it. You absolutely could do it. Yes, I can do it. And as soon as I committed to that and said, yeah, okay, and I believed in myself, that's when I downloaded the book. <laughs> all chapters, all the chapters, I grabbed a pen in my journal, I just started writing. I had all the chapters laid out and I had the first three chapters written by five o'clock that day. So it just flooded through because I let the gateways open up. I kind of said, okay, yes. Yes, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to write this book and I can do it. And whoosh, all the information came. And the same thing happens with my courses. I him and haw, what's the next course? And then all of a sudden I go, okay, no, I'm going to do a course on this because I think there's a need for it. And then it's all guided. It's all just guided. Life is responding to us, our energetic state, right? And everything begins with energy, your frequency. It all starts there. Nothing can show up in this material world without the energy first, which is a big part of dream and journey. It's the energy frequencies that we begin to work with. And I'm so excited because I'm adding a, 
module on to Dream and Journey. So those of you that have taken it already, you're already going to have access to this. But that is absolutely the next step. And then I'm excited because Dream and Journey is the foundational manifesting course. And then I have a new course beginning in April after that for those women that want to build a business. And it, it will be about the, it's going to be called Dream Big and Shine Your Light. And it's going to be about creating the energetic blueprint for your business to have a massively successful business, right? Still working on that. But anyways, so um, what you need to know is we have massive co-creating power and everything around us is just feedback of telling us, oh, you're a little bit too far this way. Come back here, right? So everything around you is just feedback. Everything that's happening in your life is feedback to tell you. I hope I'm still here. <laughs> it's up to you to believe in yourself and to commit and do the work to strengthen that belief. Like commit to yourself every day, right? Believe in yourself. That is foundational when you are working on manifesting. The belief you have in yourself will grow as you commit to yourself every day. And that, ladies, is the most important first steps. So I have for you a mindful art practice video, and it will be showing up in your email in about 10 minutes. And it is a video that will walk you through a mindful art practice and how you can work on the intention of increasing your own sense of worthiness, but through a creative activity. Okay. When we do creative activities, when we are in our creative flow, we are opening up floodgates for receiving in all ways in our life and receiving inspiration and guidance. And you will be guided to what the next right step is for you. The more you do that practice, it helps you remember the power of who you are, right? I have one more word for you guys. And I'm hoping that you're all here. I know some of you were having some internet issues and mine, it looked like mine was a little sketchy at times. The last word is guidance. So can you, can you put that sentence together and put it into the chat? And that will get your name in the draw. And because I can't see all of the chat, I'm going to um, finish off our call. And then I will be grabbing all the names. So I get everybody that was here live that got that sentence. And get it in the chat. Okay, so we got that last word. The last word was guidance. All right, you guys. It has been wonderful. Oh, okay. So I, the last word. Yeah, <laughs> I got that. Good job, Melissa. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. So keep getting them in there. Perfect. And I'm going to put your name in for an art journal. And it will be delivered straight to your door. Ah, you guys got it. Ah, beautiful. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Enjoy your journaling and the art, mindful art practice. And I will see you. Well, I'll see you tomorrow morning if you come for the 717 um, meditation with me at 717 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We meditate for 10 minutes each weekday morning. And if not, I will see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Thank you for all the love and I hope that your vibration is higher for tonight and you are feeling good because feeling good is what helps bring your manifestations in. All right. Bye, you guys. I will see you later.